Mail back time again. I'm probably going to add some more mail to this because I'm still waiting for more mail to arrive. Once it arrives, I'll add some more onto the end. So there's only four packages right now, but there'll probably be more in the video. Let's start the first thing. Oh, that's a USB hub. Well, they call them twin chargers. Now, are they chargers or are they hubs? Now, I've got some in the last video, which I actually recorded this morning as well. Last week's video to show these. Well, not these, but a different type, which I used on my Sigalant SSA, Spectrum Analyzer. And it worked fine. The idea was that I can plug in a flash drive and a wireless mouse at the same time and have used both. And this is a two-port version. Can I get into this and have a look at it? If I have a look inside, it'd be much better. I'm going to risk sacrificing one. Yes, it just clips together. Great. Brilliant. So I want to have a look and see if it is just a charger or if it actually is a hub. There we go. Okay, this is just a charger. So this one is just a two port charger. So all it does is it splits the power off between each one and there's nothing on the pins on that. So even this isn't saying on the actual main supply here, where you plug that device into, there's nothing here saying what it's actually configured to do. There's no current limiting on it or whatever. I don't know what it, the default would be with no connections on it. Is that 500 milliamps? I'm not sure what the default would be for no connections. I am sure it's online somewhere. Offhand, I don't know. But I love the way these connections aren't even soldered. See these brackets? Not soldered. The outputs have got connections, but the input doesn't. And they haven't even soldered these other pads. That's not the best quality, is it? Eh? Well, if you just want something to split off charge between two devices, this would be perfect for that, I suppose. But, yeah, maybe put it apart and solder the legs on properly first. In fact, soldering is exactly what we're going to do. Because this is how I'm going to have laying around. And I may use it for something at some point. And I want it to make sure that when I do use it, it's not going to just fall apart on me or break. So let's just put some flux on these pins. Because it's going to need it. And I'll do the same on the other one as well. Let's solder it up. Got this big chunky solder because I'm trying to get rid of it. This might move around on me. If we need to roll time, get the heat through the board, get it to stick to the metal. It's only a single sided board anyway. But uh, anyway. Some solder on it, it's better than none. At least it won't fall off when it gets a bit of leverage, point will get applied on it. I mean, these are USB ports, so all that stress of plugging things in and out. It's going to get pushed into the actual pins, the pin connections, rather than the brackets, which is uh, well, not a good situation, is it? There you go. I'll clean it up and put it back in the case. At least that will be a. Uh, usable device rather than something which is going to break in, I don't know, two or three uses. So let's pull apart the white one. So this one's got a little bit on there. They almost made an effort. Almost. So I'll clean those up and put them back together again now. They're actually in a position now where they can actually be used. But again, it's only just a voltage splitter, not a hub. So I need to go and look at the listings for this and see what actually de described the unit as. I think it did call it a hub. But I'm not sure. If I can get it back in that case, it'd be great. Next thing, Anderson connectors. Now, I've actually never used Anderson connectors before, but I've seen them and plugged them in and stuff like that, but I haven't actually installed them on anything I've actually had before. So these are, I think, basically exactly the same. All right, they're identical, the mirror image connectors. What you can do is just mirror them and they will push together like that. Okay, doesn't matter which one you use. They will all fit. So you've got negative on the same side because they flip over like this. All right? Because they flip that way, you've always got negative on the same side, it's got a polarity to it. And these are the connectors that are supposed to go inside them. On my inverter in the motorhome, there's currently got ring terminals and you know was it two gauge or four gauge cables going to it, something like that. I think it's four gauge cables. Because it only draws about 70 or 80 amps max. It's not a particularly big inverter. And because of where it's mounted in there, it's on top of the battery bank, on, which is inside the panel and stuff like that. So if I ever need to get to the batteries to work on them, I have to remove the inverter. So it's got these ring terminals on it, so I have to unbolt things, and it's a real pain. And it, each time I don't think, I wish I had a plug on this. So I finally bought some plugs. And so what I'm going to do is, well, next time I take the thing out, I'm going to do it now, but the next time I take it out, I will rewire it and use these Anderson connectors. 
Now I think these are 120 amps. Yeah, 120 amps rated. I also got a circuit breaker on it, so I can turn the circuit breaker off, plug this in or unplug it, whatever, and be fine. So this is a future project. It's not much of a project, but high current connectors sometimes you need to uh, just change what you're doing. And then ring terminals have been working fine for years, but it's been annoying. So <laughs> I kind of got sick of dealing with them. So. And some connectors for the win. Oh, uh, okay. This, although it's got the wrong plug on it, is a demagnetizing tool. It's supposed to do dual voltage. It's probably just a big inductor in there. Wrong plug, but that's okay, I can just use an adapter. It's not something I'd use very often. What I got this for is when I was working on my Unity UT210E, my little clamp meter there, I was doing a recalibration on it through firmware. I should have done a video on it. I was actually, I got towards the end of doing it. I was thinking I should have recorded a video on this. And what I was actually doing with that UT210E is I was modifying the firmware using some work that other people have done, which is so good on them for doing that, for making firmware modifications so you can change it. So currently from factory, the default to being turned on in AC mode, right? So you turn on AC, AC volts, AC current, whatever. So one of the things you can do is change the firmware so it defaults to DC, which is much more suitable for most cases for people which tend to buy these things. Part of it is to change it so it defaults to DC. The other thing you can do is go from 2,000 counts to say 6,000 or potentially 10,000 counts instead of 2,000. So that changes ranges less often, it's a bit more versatile. Kind of, unless you do zeroing. If you zero it, then it's still limited to 2,000 counts. It's a bit of a firmware quirk on it, well, a system quirk. But part of it is you actually recalibrate it. Now, when I was doing my testing on it, I thought, well, I've got a chance here to recalibrate whilst I'm redoing the firmware. So I did some testing on it, verified that yes, it is actually out of calibration, and did some work on it, and tweaked some pots inside to do some tuning because it wasn't quite right for that, and then recalibrated the reading, so it's actually reading to create values within a much closer proportion. It's like half an amp to one amp out before, I think it was about half an amp out. So now it's least a significant digit, a couple of digits, you know, that sort of region, it's, it's much closer. Problem with clamp meters, never particularly great anyway, but it's way better than it was. But part of it is that the clamp meters can get magnetised. And sort of in a roundabout way, I'm getting back to this thing. They can get magnetised, and when they get magnetised a little bit from doing readings, um, it can actually affect how they read. So I've got this to demagnetise the clamp meters. The idea is you put the clamp meter on it, you push a budge, and you just gradually move it away, and it will demagnetise it. It's a known thing. This is a cheap little thing. This was not expensive at all. I think it was like ten dollars something like that. And they're really common. It's just a demagnetising tool. That thing's any particular use for a certain thing was it? I don't think it was, but cheap, probably effective. I expect it will work. I love what it says on the side though for 110 volt, 50 cycles, and 220 volts, 60 cycles. Can you spot the problem with this? Comments down below if you can. Currently, the last thing, there may be more, like I said, depends if more stuff turns up. Ramtech power supply has got some ring terminals here and a adapter for some kind. Power cable, the correct type. Not insulated though, not current standards. So it's a Chinese plug, not a New Zealand one. So it's the KPS 3020D. So it's 30 volts, 20 amps. Obviously a switch mode supply, not linear. These are encoders. Clunking power button. Everyone loves a clunking power button. So this can do 20 amps, which is why I got this thing. I've got my lab power supply. I've got two power supplies here. I've got a recorded power supply just here, which is three channels, five amps per channel, apart from the five volt channel, which is only one amp. Oh, sorry, three amps. And above that, I've got my signal SDP 101 68X, which I don't actually use it often. I find I use this thing most of the time, but the signal's there because it, I can't actually remote control it and stuff like that. That can do eight amps at 16 volts. They're both linear power supplies. Because this is a switch mode, which can do 20 amps apparently. I've seen someone else using one like this on Off Grid Garage actually. Andy, he does lots of solar stuff, and he's got one very similar to this, but he does 60 volts at 20 amps. I think it was some of that. This is smaller, but something can do high current. Like if you need to charge up a battery, which needs a high current, I much rather be stressing this power supply than my nice linear power supply. I'd rather be putting it through this one. So let's power this up now. Quick look at it. So here's the back of the unit, it's got an RS-485 connection on the back, which is what this little board is for, RS-485. You've also got ring terminals on the back, which is what 
these are supplied for, so you're going to connect up to it with ring terminals. Nice one to supply them. All right, so I've got my Siglent electronic load set up. I've got some nice thick cables. These are four gauge, should do the job. Let's power it up. Supply power here. Make sure these are tight. Let's move it around. Power it up. There we go. There's the display. Version 3. So 31 volts, 21 amps max. So that's what it's currently set up for. There is currently no output. Let's turn the output on. So we've got a constant voltage supply, got an instant indicator for the output. Over current protection, which you can set apparently. And you also got current current. So we're seeing output 31 volts there. I am basically seeing 31 volts on the signal. So we should put a load on the signal and see how this thing handles it. So we've got the voltage adjustment here through an encoder. So I'm actually gonna drop this down. Let's just do actually no I won't. Let's do 30 volts. Let's leave it on 30 volts. Alright. So 30 volts, that's only 10 amps. And can it do 30 volts and 20 amps? Maybe. Actually, it might be able to, but my electronic load can't. It's only rated to 300 watts. We'll do 10 amps in this range. Um, can I change that? Here we go. Do 10 amps out. 300 watts, that's the most my electronic load can do. We'll just try that first. The load, I'm going to start off with a lower load. Let's just try 3 amps to start with. Turn it on. 3 amps is looking good. That concurs. 5 amps, yep, that's fine. Voltage drops looking good. 10 amps, 300 watts, that's the most my electronic load can do. That's not a problem at all. So now we're going to reduce the voltage. Let's go down to say 10 volts and we'll crank the current up instead. Let's do 15 amps. And we've dropped down because we've got this limited to 10 amps. So let's change the current. 15, 16 amps, there we go, it's come up. That's working fine then. So obviously when you are below that limit, you see what constant current comes on here. All right, so let's wind this up to 20 amps. Let's go 21. So it's 150 watts at this voltage. That's fine, that's exactly what I expect. Do 20 amps, 25 amps, and that's dropped down as you expect. And 20 amps, there we go, it's come back again. Yeah, that seems fine. That's working alright. Let's increase the voltage. So I can get more power. There you go. That is my electronic load saying overpower and shutting down because it's since it's more than 300 watts. So that's fine. That works alright. That seems to be loading okay. So that seems to be working fine. I mean, obviously, I need to do long term testing on it and check for things like turn on noise, like sometimes on a power supply, as you turn them on, the output will spike a voltage out. You have to watch out for that in some cases. You can actually destroy equipment you got connected to it, so that's something to watch out for. Also, I need to test for that sort of thing and output ripple and all that kind of stuff. I may do a video about it, maybe, I don't know, maybe I won't. This is a nice little quick overview of this thing. Standby's power is 5 watts. I'll turn the output back off. It's now 2.5 watts instead. So, that's fine. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not subscribed before. Oh, hold on, who's this? Click subscribe right now. So that's a duty for me. Patreon support link over there if you want to support me on Patreon, help me to buy things from our bag or bits of test equipment fix, which is what I'd really like to be doing. And other videos and stuff to watch just down there. Check out the description, other things for links for mailbag items and other videos. Things you might be interested in. Catch you later.